Hi, and welcome to a new tutorial. The last time we have concentrated mainly on volume differences to create more stereo information with panning. And as the last time, we will concentrate still on mono sound sources, as here we have first to create stereo information and not only treat information which is already present and thereby easier to do. Volume isn't everything our ears measures when a noise happens. In fact, our hearing reacts only very little to volume differences. While we can detect very small changes in pitch, most people can hardly tell the difference of volume up to 3 dB. Due to our evolutionary history, to be able to hunt and quickly detect danger, directional hearing was essential for human survival. A very crucial part for directional hearing are timing differences between the left and the right ear, to which we react very sensitive. When a sound is happening, it always reaches both ears, but not necessarily at the same time. If the source is placed more to the left, it reaches the left ear first. And depending on the size of our head, a little bit later the right ear while everything which reaches the right ear is additionally filtered by our head. When listening to music with two space speakers, of course this happens from the left and the right. Based on these timing differences, when these sounds appear at the left or at the right ear, we already have quite good impression where these sound sources are located. And talking about these timing differences of a single audio signal, we talk about phase differences between the left and right channel. If I take a mono signal which comes directly from the front and I shift one channel the slightest amount, this sounds immediately very wide and we got suddenly the impression the sound would come from the side which wasn't delayed, the left channel in this case. Exactly this is the often mentioned Haas effect. While this effect can give us very impressive and super wide stereo results, face manipulations are very dangerous when we want to keep our sound monocompatible. First, as I already mentioned in previous videos, we are delaying a part of the signal, which gets easily noticeable in mono for signal with sharp transients. Second, on steady frequencies, phase cancellation can make our sound quieter or let it even disappear completely in worst case. I have here a sine wave with a frequency of 100 Hz. Hz means cycles per second. One second has 1000 milliseconds. At a frequency of 100 Hz means 1000 milliseconds divided by 100 cycles that one cycle takes 10 milliseconds. I duplicate the track which gives us a master volume of minus 6 dB. Nudging the duplicate one millisecond later reduces the volume already by half a dB. Another millisecond brings us down by minus 1.8 dB. Further by minus 4.6. The volume halved until it disappears at 5 milliseconds. This setting inverted the phase of the duplicate. Remember one cycle equals to 10 milliseconds in our example. This equals to full circle or 360 degrees. From this follows that 5 millisecond equals to 180 degrees means all the cycles which were positive before are now negative with the same level. Plus 1, minus 1 equals to 0 or silence in regards to audio. Looking at the sine sweep going through all the frequencies though, we find a different behavior with the same delay set.
the rendered result shows us a steady up and down between parts with the full signal and ones which go silent. This is known as comb filtering, as it looks like as if someone has combed out certain areas. This effect is very noticeable as we know from flanger or phaser effects. The Haas effect is a very powerful method to create super wide stereo sounds, but we have to be careful how and when we may use it. However, there are ways to reduce the negative side effects, but first of all a way that does not work. The usable range for the Haas effect is in between 1 and 40 milliseconds. Longer times are perceived by our hearing more and more as an actual echo. Often it is recommended to use longer delay times instead of shorter ones to reduce the negative side effects. This is not quite correct. Longer delay times only cause more phase problems and are often more difficult to get under control. It always depends on the trial, but most of the time shorter times are preferable. But this for example happens if we reduce the volume of the delay channel. All these deep notches have turned now into more gentle dips. And with high and low pass filtering, we can flatten the response even more. Let's take the distorted guitar riff from the last video. Loading my mono delay preset makes the guitar sound super white. But in mono, Especially the first two bars sound very flanging and ugly. With mono activated, let's find first a delay time where it doesn't sound that super ugly. This is a very important step, so take your time to experiment. I decide to go with 5 milliseconds. Now I turn down the delay's volume about 70 to 75 percent. Applying some filtering after the delay cleans up the mono signal even more. After switching to stereo again, I adjust the panning of the undelayed channel to center my guitar a bit. Finally a bit EQ and reverb on the whole signal. Nearly no difference between mono and stereo. This is where we started from. And the stereo version, fully mono compatible. Next example. This time with a send channel. Panning left and right. Inserting the delay and adjusting the time.
I go this time with 3.8 millisecond. As at this setting the guitar loses a bit of low end rumble, I would have to EQ out anyway. The filter. I can definitely live with that result. All timing differences cause phase differences. But not all phase differences are timing differences. There is another method to play around with the phase without changing the timing of the signal. High pass and low pass filters. We have already seen in my video about EQs that minimal phase filters cause a shift in the phase of the signal. I insert my left-right EQ patcher preset on this hi-hat line and use the high-pass filters at different frequencies to create phase shifts between the left and the right channel. As you can see on the Ganaya meter, the signal already got wider. This isn't an as impressive result as with the Haas effect. But as the phase shift just happens in a smaller range of the signal, this method is quite monocompatible from the very start. Nevertheless, it enhances the attack of the hi-hats a tad too much for my taste. So I use a second EQ to cut the lower parts on both channels a bit more. The stereo version has still more attack than the mono one. But is more important and I can live with the lesser attack on the mono one. Perhaps a bit of delay and a tad reverb to give it some space. These are the most important methods to create stereo information quasi from nothing and which can be done easily in any door by using just the stock effect plugins. Panning, phase differences from delaying one channel, phase difference by using the phase shift effect from high and low pass filters, the use of time based effects like reverb and delay. In the next video we will have a look into some further processing and third-party effects, free and payware, which often do a very very good job. Have a good time, stay tuned and thank you for watching.